Hi everyone, today I will show you how to analyze riboseq data using Xtail. First, I will show you how to process the data to feed into Xtail, and then we will use a one-liner to launch the Xtail program using a Docker image. Xtail is one of the many RiboSeq implementations. I use it in several publications because it is not only highly sensitive and accurate, but also is straightforward to implement. So before we start, let's refresh what type of data we are going to analyze. The idea of the RiboSeq is to detect changes in translation between different conditions at a transcriptome level. So for example, we have an RNA here and the same type of transcript here, and both they are being bound by different number of ribosomes, like this RNA is being bound by two ribosomes, and here we have the other that is a little bit more packed, has three, three ribosomes here. So the idea is that we take this sample and then we isolate all these ribosomes that are being bound or are bound to the mRNA. And we, when we isolate them, we carry over that footprint of RNA. And at the end, we'll purify those footprints. And this is the ribosome protected footprints. And at the same time, what we want to do is to take an aliquot also of this sample, purify the RNA or mRNA without the ribosome, and then we do directly RNA seq from, from these samples. And this will be our RNA seq library that will help us understand how many transcripts we have. Okay, once you have these libraries, what you do is to map them to uh, the transcriptome and then you get the number of read counts for each transcript. So in the first part of this video, I want to show you how to go from this count matrix for each individual library where you have here all the transcripts and, and, and here you have the read count for each of them. So this is the code that we are going to use to put together all of those count matrices from the different libraries. I will put the code in the description for you to have. So let me run this code very briefly. And at the end of the day, what we get are this RNA matrix where we have for every library of RNA, the number of reads map to each of the transcripts in the transcriptome or at least those that uh, were detectable and we have that for the RNA but also we have for the ribosome footprint if we run and ask for that ribosome library matrix we also get it so let me walk you very briefly through this script that we are using to put together all the count matrices the first thing that we do is to load the metadata and the metadata looks very simple. It has the name of the sample, then the condition. And this would be the two different types of conditions that we are going to compare and how translation changed from one to the other one. Here we are naming them D0 and D6. And, and then we have the third column where we indicate what type of library we are dealing with. So this can be either the RNA libraries or the fragment protected libraries that here we are referring is as ribos. So we have done. So the second step in the pipeline is to upload into a list all these read count files. And what we end up is a list where we have all these read count for all the different conditions. This is just an object where we are loading all of those files and we use the metadata to do this. Finally, we want to do the count matrices, one for the RNA samples and one for the ribosome footprint samples. So we do it with this code over here and this is what we get 
what I showed you previously, either the live the count matrix for the ribosome footprints or we have the count matrix for the RNA. The last thing that you need to do before loading the data to Excel is provide a vector where you tell each of the samples to what condition they belong. So for example, here for the RNA, we have sample one to eight. And in this vector, we are saying like, okay, the first two samples belong to condition D0, the second two to D6, the following two to D0, and the final two to D6. So this is the command that we want to run. Uh, but there is a little caveat here. So installing Xtail can be a little bit complicated. I mean, it's not impossible, but there is a more simple way to go about this and is to use a Docker image. So if you don't know what Docker is, don't worry, I will just show you and you'll see how easy it is to use it and you will not have to do any of the installing or dealing with dependencies and so on and so forth. So the first thing that you need to do to use Docker is, of course, install it. But once you have that, the next thing is you want to download the Excel library and you do it with this docker pull command. I already done this. So we move to the next step and is to launch that script using a docker images. So here we have some parameters that first call docker and then ask uh, to mount the directories that we are using. So this is telling the Docker image use this data. And, and these are the commands that you need to write to do that. Then we call that Docker image that we just downloaded. And then we run the R script and we pass the different parameters here. So note that here we are not using the Rmark code that I just show you, but I simplified and I'm just giving this. That is essentially the same as the R uh, markdown, but instead of providing or explicitly showing here or, or writing the directories and where's the metadata file, we pass those as parameters here. And that's why we add uh, those directories and where the metadata is and where we want the results here after we call uh, for that script. So now we have to run Docker using this line of code. So we launch that and what Excel will try to do is calculate that delta of translation between the experimental condition uh, versus the control condition. In our case, we are calling this D6 and D0. And it will do it in two ways. First, it will calculate the delta of the ribosome uh, protected fragments for the experimental versus the control. And then we'll normalize by the delta of the mRNA expression, also between the experimental versus the control. The other way that it will calculate this is the same delta uh, of translation between the experimental versus the control is first to estimate the translation in the experimental sample and that will be comparing the, uh, the ribosome footprinted in the experimental sample to the mRNA in the experimental sample and divided by the same but done in the control sample. And at the end, it will integrate these two of calculating the change in translation and it will give what it believes more appropriate. So if you want to dive deeper, you can check the publication of Xtail where all of this is explained in more detail. So the program is running now and first it's estimated the log twofold change of the RNA and then the look log twofold change of the ribosome protection protected fragments and it will continue calculating the different uh, comparisons that I just show you.
the Docker script that we just launched will save the data in this object that we have here, this Xtail result. And if you look into it, we have all those calculations and p-values that I have shown you for each of the transcripts. So we have the log to fall change of mRNA, the log to fall change of ragbosom protected fragment, and then we have the first calculation of translational changes uh, with its p-value. Then we have the other calculation for, that is to say, calculate the translational change for one condition, then for the other condition, and then using these two, have a new estimate of the global translational fault change with the p-value. And at the end, the algorithm decides, okay, which is the fault change and p-value that it, it's going to use, and then goes and do, does the adjusted p-value. So at the end of the day, this is the final translational chain value that you want to, to use, and this is the adjusted p-value. Okay, so that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you like it, subscribe to the channels to make this content more accessible to you in the future and people like you. And I'll ask you also to go and check my other videos and I will see you there.